thank you. It's a bit easier to start with an applause. <laughs> and so I have been doing this this year for 10 years now. I work on the high wire in search of the artistic truth. And from 10 years now, I have been practicing Zazen, the sitting meditation of Zen Buddhism. I sit down, I breathe in search of the authenticity of being. And after many years on the wire, and after many years sitting in Zazen, I have noticed that these two disciplines has a place in common. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, invite you to do an exercise to try and get this place. So please, Take a comfortable um, attitude on your chair, relax, and uh, focus your attention on the right hand, normally, and breathe normally. <laughs> Try not to listen to my daughter. <laughs> breathe normally and please, while you breathe in, you close the, the hand, you close the fist, and then, while breathing out, just let it open. And let it open. While closing the hand, please watch out. Don't use muscle you don't need. Don't use uh, arm but muscle, shoulder muscle, neck muscle. Just forearm and then muscle. And let it open. Next time, close the end a bit stronger, just a bit. And let it open. Okay. Close the end, hold the breath, and stay there just a bit. Don't feel uneasy, just stay there a bit, and then start uh, breathing normally. Let the relaxation feeling of the forearm spread through all your body. A bit. Okay. Next time, please stay a bit at the end of the breathing out with the empty lung. Watch if there is something down there. If you feel something, just uh, recorded it. For me, it's at the end of a deep breathing that uh, high wire walking and uh, Zen meditation meet each other. If you have uh, experienced this perception, there isn't much that I can add. If it has been deep, my word can only distort it. If instead the perception has not been clear, I would like to tell you about the obstacle that blur the purity of perception. I can imagine that you too, uh, while breathing and trying to concentrate, have been uh, distracted by the usual thought, question, doubts. For example, I was thinking about the first letter of my next word, bad, Good. <laughs> oh my gosh, I <laughs> I have maybe I better to change the word. So I think everyone has his own uh, think. And about thinking, people often ask me, what do you think about when you are on the high wire? And even before I speak, uh, they often add something that looks like uh, an answer, but is a real another question about nothing. And then, while I have not spoken yet, come the real question. Is it really possible to think about nothing? Until some time ago, I usually answered, no, it's not possible not to think. Even during sleep, brain keep on generating thought. The only thing that we can do, to tell it in terms of Zen, is to let our thought go away. To watch them without being caught in them. If we are the sky, 
our thoughts are just clouds that pass by and go away. The point is to let them go, not to hold them and not to go after them. But at some time, I changed my answer. Usually, balance stands in front of me. I pursue it. If it already belonged to my present, I would be standing still. The walk on a high wire is a continuous succession of imbalances. However, after many years on the wire, I have happened to experience a few moments, very brief moments, in which nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing moves. Those a perfect moment in which the absolute explodes in silence. The perfect high wire walking would be a succession of 3,670 moments of this type. I would be motionless and in every single place at the same time. In such moment of stillness, even the thinking process stops. So, the answer I now give is yes, we can not think. Next question is, what happens when thoughts stop to happen? Shortly before they stop, or better said, shortly before I stop to listen to them, when I have, already, I have already a foot on the wire and I'm about to lift the other from the ground, in that moment before suspension, fear comes by and whisper in my ear, stop. It says that I should never put a risk what I will now leave behind, my past, my future, my concern, my thoughts, all the things that make me Andrea Loreni, the most important things I have, the thing of which I should especially take care. By now, I have got to know very well this whispered word of fear, and I know that what fear shows me as the most important thing is nothing but the ballast I have to let go of if I want to fly. Returning to the exercise that we have just uh, done, the end that opened up symbolized the act of letting go in order to fly away, in order to ascend beyond ourselves. It symbolized the act of letting go what there was in order to freely, no, sorry, in order to, uh, again, in order to receive what there will be, of letting behind the well-known, in order to freely perceive the unknown in all its vastness. Pure perception, when deprived of the thinking ego, which continually process, catalog, divide, and individualizes as an infinite vastness. Pure perception captures the deep reality that hides behind the appearance that we see as real. The other day, my mother came to visit me and told me, while I'm getting here by car, I have done an exercise of awareness. She, too, uh, has been practicing some meditation now. And then she did, while I was driving, I thought of the fact of driving. I don't tell her that to think about what one is doing means to be a step away from one's own acting progress. If I would think of what I'm doing on the wire, I'm taking a step, I'm a bit unbalanced, I'm straightening the pole, soon I would think of how I'm falling. When I'm on the wire, I have to let my body do. I have to get rid of any thought and to become exactly what I do. That is why I say that the walk on a wire is an act of truth. Because there is no room for lies, no room for fiction, or even just for a disconnection between me and my action. Awareness is the immersion in the present, at the cost of losing one's past and future, at the cost of losing one's doubt and concern. If we accept these losers, we can perceive our genuine being. And it's there, beyond fear, beyond the unknown and the hesitation that I have found freedom. Freedom from any constraint, from any specification, from my small ego, 
which on its own would never allow me to walk on a steel wire 60, 160 meter high. And soon, as soon as we perceive the genuine being, the dimension of reality change. It's like when we are climbing a mountain and we stop to wait for our partner, we turn, we watch him, and even uh, he might be only a few meters away with the mountain in the, the background, he looks very small. If he was not wearing that red or green jacket, we would hardly see him. We become much smaller, but at the same time, being substantiated by the absolute infinite. And there is no need to walk on a steel wire in the middle of the sky, even if uh, I can say that doing that does help. But uh, absolute perception is there. Is, uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Absolute is there, at any time and any place, ready to be perceived. Okay. Between God and the beggar, a flower of U. Aikus are the translation into words of these glimpses of authenticity. They are moments of pure perception. And there they are, always ready to be perceived, lived and recorded. By sitting for hours in Zanzen meditation, we train ourselves to grasp the void whenever it shows up. And this void and the Zen looking for it are physical, tactile issue. issue. The body is our place in present. With this perception, it connects us with the here and now. I train my body to work on the high wire, and once on the wire, I let it do everything. Its ancestral knowledge, its ability to perceive and react, is what can bring me to a safe place, to take me to the other end of the wire. I just have to let him go free, that is, to wash it, it from the influence of rational mind. The first step is to keep it relaxed. The rational blocks, the fear and the worries reveal themselves in the body through contraction, which, in the first place, affect breath. Breath is the connecting hinge between relativeness and absoluteness. It has a mediating role between body and spirit. And fear shortens the breath. I train myself to breathe properly in any situation. To breathe like when I'm standing in front of a cherry tree in blossom. How do I know how I breathe in front of something beautiful? I watch myself, I listen to myself, I sense myself while I breathe calmly, I list my feeling, I live and relieve them. I become the object of my perception and then I try to reproduce that physical state when I am on a wire 19 meters above the ground. The mind gets anxious, okay, but I let it be. I let the mind on its own level, while, on the physical level, I breathe calmly. My body is relaxed but alert at the same time. My diaphragm moves freely and, if any of my muscles contract, I do relax it. I sense my body as much as I can, exactly as we have done in the exercise of the open end. I try to get to know my body in any circumstances and I watch how my body and mind affect each other. Relaxed, free, open, breathing deeply, my body tells me how to behave. Or better said, I later see how it behaved. It does not need to tell me anything. It does exactly what the situation requires. Words belong to the rational level, not to the realm of action. Kufu. <laughs> what is Kufu? Kufu is a very common word in Japan. It's a bit difficult to translate and generally is translated as creative invention. For example, in the past, to prevent a fire from spreading in a neighborhood, the firemen would uh, climb onto the roof of a nearby house and knock down all its tiles, or even demolish completely the building. 
And what you do in such a situation in which you, you have to decide how to solve a problem in a matter of second is called Khufu. We might die on the high wire, and we might die even in front of a cherry tree in blossom. If we are not afraid, if our body is relaxed, we might die if our spirit is free. We merge with the scent of the present, and we become the pink color of flowers' vein. We go so deep into the perception of reality, of beauty, that we forget ourselves. Our small selves die. We not only become the cherry tree and its color, we also become the whole present, the whole reality of that instant, because we enter the network of relationship that underlies what we commonly call reality and that we often see as divided. At first there is me and there is the cherry tree, the perceiving subject and the perceived object. This is the moment when, while sitting in meditation, the cowing of a crow outside the window bothers me. I take a step forward and the distance between subject and object gets smaller. They both exist only in a perceptual relationship. One more step and only the perceptual relationship remains. At this point, the sound of a crow stops being a disturbing matter out of me, because there no longer exists me and the crow. Only the act of perception remains, a single time-place unit that includes me and the cowing of the crow. The cowing and the auditory perception with no distinction. Once the subject has vanished, there is no longer anyone that can be bothered. And at the end, even the single relationship subsists in relation to other relationship, and so on. We are lost in all this connection, and we are all this connection. We are lost from a relative point of view, but we are everything from an absolute point of view. Pure perception has this vastness and it captures the truth. The real risk is not to die in our small ego, but to live our being in a non-authentic way. We accept the fear, we accept the loss and the risk. We accept to be much more than what we think we are. We stand in front of a cherry tree in blossom as if it was in front of the abyss. To be able to stand in front of the abyss as if it was in front of a cherry tree in blossom. <laughs>